Hey guys and girls, well it's finally here, the Creality uh, CR10 V2. Um, getting this thing was an absolute nightmare. So I ordered it from Amazon. The first order I did, it said uh, expected or uh, two days later. Um, two days later it came and went, it then went to your packages late, to your packages lost, to we refunded your money. Um, I then reordered it and I was monitoring it quite closely and within the space of five minutes it went to your orders expected tomorrow, your orders delayed, your orders lost. I then spent two weeks chasing my tail with Amazon who agreed that they didn't know what was going on. DPD turned around and said, well actually, hey, guess what, we've never received your package from Amazon anyway. So I cancelled it and got it from eBay. So and as you can see, when I've unpackaged this, the 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 the, the wheels that are on the base um, aren't connected. So this should all be connected in one piece. And as you can see, it's just not. It's it was a complete mess. Um, what I can assume has happened is that during transport, all the actual uh, leveling wheels, bed leveling wheels, have all come loose and just fallen off. So that was a bit odd to say the least and I for a second I was like well is this broken do I do I need to send it back um, but no it had just all worked loose I did a visual inspection of everything and everything else seemed fine so like I say all I can assume is that during transit this thing had actually just just managed to un, undo itself that or at factory um, they didn't bother doing doing it up but I very much doubt that to be honest I've had loads of Creality uh, machines um, end of threes, uh, CR10s and all that, and, and they're fine. You know, they always arrive fine, they're always pretty good. So what I've had to do with this is actually reattach the heated bed um, to the, the bottom frame. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just trying to find all the, the wheels uh, and get the wheels attached. So, yeah. Um, the main reason I bought this is um, the, the CR10s I've had in the past, I can't I can't use uh, at home because they're they're part of um, part of my job. Uh, as they're school printers. So what this is is um, this one's for home use, and it's actually for doing some of the the helmets and the Iron Man armor and so forth. So I've got uh, I've managed to get the MK85 far from DO3D and the Robocop far from DO3D. Um, I have already printed the Iron Man helmet, but wasn't a fan. Um, for the of the DOD DO 3D file, so I have got another one off CG uh, Trader, so I'll be doing that one, and I'll be talking doing a video to talk you through my orientation, sizing it in Armorsmith, and everything like that. So um, yeah, so like I said, I'm just fixing this mess, delivery mess, and then we'll get into the actual putting it together. I'll try and keep it, I'll try and keep it as short sweet as possible, um, with some sort of detailed explanations of what's going on as we go this this builds a really straightforward build you probably won't need a video um, I do just do a video for all my builds purely for in case anyone does want want to watch it um, so yeah so just putting those uh, wheels on and then we can get started so have you got a v2 are you thinking of getting the v2 uh, don't forget the v3 is coming out soon um, I didn't go for the v3 purely because um, I was getting the uh, Titan direct from E3D and to be honest that's been nothing but a nightmare and I'll put a video up explaining that uh, hopefully very soon. Okay so I've got most of the issues sorted out with the, the heated bed and the bed's now attached to the bottom frame um, with the, the little yellow spring so I've laid everything out just as I can see what's going on. So let's get started with this. So you can see that I've managed to get all the, the springs attached and the, uh, the leveling wheels uh, checked all my things. So we're going to use the, the little black screws to attach the, the top frame and it's literally just a case of making sure the cables are out of the way, lining it up and slotting them in from underneath, a little bit fiddly, uh, might be best to, to try and turn it up on its side or move it over the edge of a table um, just so you can actually see what you're doing. Um, but it's four screws that attach the, the bottom to the uh, bottom frame to the top frame. 
pretty simple and straightforward. That's what I do like about these printers is that they've they've sort of developed over the years and become very very easy to put together. Um, if you look back at my previous videos, the the CTC um, build that I had to do with my very first 3D printer was a nightmare. I mean, it was literally you had to build pretty much all of it. You know, all the cables, all the wires, all the connectors. So what I'm doing here is I'm just moving the, the Z axis up a little bit, give me some clearance. Okay, and just in the little bag you'll have your, your uh, Allen keys. We call them Allen keys over here, I'm not sure what you call them in like America and other places, but they're good old fashioned Allen keys. Just uh, tightening it up. Like I say, it'd be easy if you had like a spare pair of hands, just to get that that bottom bit in. But pretty easy to manage and do. So as you can see, just tightening those up, and that's it. Just do all four of those. Now come on to the um, the support rods. Okay, so you'll have some uh, little. Uh, double-ended threads that you can just screw in and do that with both poles you need to do that twice okay screw those together it reminds me of doing like an IKEA IKEA furniture kit yeah. okay just try to make sure they're sort of evenly spaced as in you know you don't want a tiny bit one side and loads the other and you need yeah you need two of, like I say you need two of those you're then gonna put the the screw and nut on and then just screw those in Um, make sure you do both ends, so exactly the same both ends. So I haven't used a printer with these um, these sort of supports before, so apparently it stops the um, the wobbling of the printer and reduces some print issues. So just make sure they're. Um, quite low we can uh, sort them out in a bit when we put it on and do that with the other one as well you should have uh, two of these like that we're then going to fit these to the uh, the base so we need to switch out the end caps okay so you should have uh, two of those end caps and we're going to put um, the mounting bracket together and we use the uh, hammer nuts for this. So you just pop the screw through, put a little nut on. And this attaches to the top of the frame and just line it up with the, the edge of the, um, the uh, edge of the top like so, tighten up the hammer nuts till they lock into place and do that the other side as well. We then attach the uh, support beams on both sides and there's one screw that goes in the top, one in the bottom. You may have to adjust the, um, the little spaces just so as it lines up. See, so I'm having to just undo that slightly to get it lined up and just adjust the top one slightly okay and once you've got this all together you are going to want to tighten these up uh, so as they don't move at all you don't want to be able to sort of finger loosen them really like everything really just take your time get it right I find with a lot of these like a lot of the issues some sometimes you do get issues but um, 
most of the time it's just because something's not been put together properly something's not tight uh, so like I say do take your time you can you do occasionally get like issues from from the manufacturer or like a warped bed or you know um, a dodgy uh, a dodgy Z rod or something but and don't be afraid to ask on the forums for help you know there are some for you do get some silly comments sometimes from people but at the end of the day just you know stick with it okay so that's done so what we're gonna do now is put the spool holder together so it literally just screws on like so and you can att you can attach this to the actual frame or you can attach it to the control box I'm just gonna do mine to the control box at the moment as I'll probably end up printing a um, a different spool holder and that just you know just screws on with the uh, two little thumb screws provided it's quite nice they'd sent the uh, the free little roll of filament quite like that it's a nice little touch okay so we're then doing the Z stop the thing about this and I've seen on a lot of videos is the fact that um, this screws in and it's fixed which will I've seen on some videos it causes problems when you level the bed um, so you could replace this out if you're not getting the uh, the BR touch you could get uh, some little uh, sort of hammer nuts and so you can make the Z stop uh, movable to move it up and down and uh, a lot of people find that really helps when trying to level the bed and uh, we'll explain why when we get to that part okay just connecting up the uh, the control box okay so it's all pretty straightforward they only really go in one way that's me trying to put it in the wrong way so turn it over line it up properly and just a little bit of pressure to push it in same with the um, the other connector and again <laughs> the uh, clip goes to the bottom so just bear that in mind okay and that's connected and then you need to screw the the uh, larger cable into the actual control box and then tighten the the little screw clamp thing oh, with it with the technical terms today and then we're just going to connect up all the um, the cables to so the Z cable for the Z stepper motor it should just pop in should do get it the right way around so it's quite exciting for some some people if this is if this is your first sort of 3d printer that you you use in then actually this is quite quite um, quite an easy build you should you know it's not gonna take too much trouble and there we go that's the other Z uh, stepper motor um, obviously if you're building something like a CTC clone or a RepRap clone then you're going to learn quite a lot but with these machines if you just take your time you know use the forums use the resources it, it, that you get you know you can learn quite a lot quite quick so this is just uh, connecting up the Z uh, Z end stop and they're all labeled okay so we're good to go now so we're going to auto home and hopefully everything goes according to plan so we've uh, got the print head moving down uh, should hit the, the switch there we go no issues there so now we need to think about uh, disabling the stepper motors actually um, trying to get it level okay so leveling I'm just gonna move it into to each corner and place a bit of paper under and then I'm gonna try and move the uh, the bed up to get the nozzle closer 
and what I actually found when doing this is that actually the it's actually really quite difficult to level the V2 like this um, because the the Z stops quite low and I know a few other people online have had the same issue uh, video, other videos that I've watched personally and it is it, I didn't expect to encounter it I don't know why maybe I thought you know it was just gonna be easier than it was but it's actually quite difficult to get to get all of them at the right point so um, like I say you could take the Z stop off put some uh, hammer nuts on there so that it can be moved lower which is what a lot of people like to do I persisted with the with this and what I did was I did all four did all four corners got it to kind of where, where I wanted it and if you do all four corners don't just focus on one corner and try to get that perfect go round do all of them sort of a little bit at a time move it up slowly so as it all moves up together and is a bit more consistent and um, yeah and just just go slow honestly I, I know I keep saying it go slow but just take your time don't rush it don't get frustrated it's really easy to be like ah oh, why is this not working and then you know if you if you got that sort of temperament then seriously back off take your time and just chill okay so what we're looking for is a little bit of, of, of drag between the nozzle and uh, the paper just just a very scratchy type of drag okay okay so we're going to do the test print of the dog uh, that's on the SD card um, I'm doing the dog because I did the dog on my first sort of ender 3 as my first ender 3 test print so I'm going to stick with the dog I'll do the pig on the BL when I install the BL touch um, this it's not too bad. I did notice with an all metal hot end, so I haven't used an all metal hot end before, even though this is the clone, V6 clone. Um, that I mean, this was printing at 185, and I don't know if it was the the hot end or the the filament that came with it, but it's very, it's quite runny. It's quite a runny filament that that test reel. Did I don't know if you found this, but um, yeah. So I I didn't. I've, I've let it run. I didn't change the temperature. So this is printing at 185. Um, and it, it went okay actually. It was a you know it's a two hour print. Um, the dog came out really clean, and we take a look at that. You know, it came out very very nice uh, indeed. So no real issues there. Support oh, there was a little bit of support on the bottom. I haven't taken all that off yet, but that's what we got. So I want to say a massive thank you to everyone for subscribing, liking, watching. Um, sharing you guys make the channel and you know I make these videos because I really enjoy making them and if it helps one even one in one person out then I feel like job done so again thank you for subscribing if it has helped you do hit that subscribe button click the bell for future videos I have got the um, the BL touch install video that's all uh, all good to go and just finishing off the editing now and I'll upload that very very shortly so if you don't want to miss that remember to press subscribe click the bell and then that way you'll get a notification when then that's uploaded uh, any questions or comments please do put them below and I'll try to answer uh, everyone who comments and thanks for watching